missing newly and I hate that you know what happened to me. You said this to me, you said this to me, and I did it to my actions. If you kiss me, I would have kissed you a long time ago, Tether. Good night. having a conversation with um, a friend last night after watching all of Tatu's shenanigans with Gashwan. Um, inclusive of the conversation she had with um, Gashwan, Tools and Sister Mara. And we both came to the conclusion that Tatu is playing a dangerous game. Yeah, whatever our new script is, if whatever she's doing with Gashwan now is a new strategy, that she's totally, totally late yeah, not even fashionably late, but I don't know, should I say, um, I don't know, but let's just put it that she's very, very late. And aside to being late, she's playing a very, very dangerous game. And I'll tell you why. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Glory Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory. I am the girl with the tea. Now, great news, guys. Tomorrow, as you already know, is our FSWG YouTube live stream on this channel. We do this every Saturday. 3 p.m. WAT or 4 p.m. CAT. We're going to be having conversations with more um, Bibi Nzamzi ex-housemates, all right? I don't want to name names yet because I need to be very, very sure. I'm sure actually, but I just need to get more solid confirmation to know how many people will be hosting tomorrow, if it's one, if it's two, or if it's all of the three Epitet housemates, all right? But I'll give you guys that information, but just, just make it a date with us tomorrow. Don't forget to come through. Um, if any of those housemates are or were your favorite whilst they were in the game, then you totally need to pull through because um, we're going to be having a virtual live conversation and you will be able to ask whichever kind of question you want to ask to any of the housemates or housemates. Make sure you join us so you do not miss out. Now let's officially start this video. So, yesterday I put out a video talking about how Tattoo Friend zoned Gashwan. But I also asked a question. Yeah, and um, I put out a clause there on that video that I wasn't really sure that Tato was serious about friend zoning Gashwan because it seemed like she had some plans up her sleeves. And <laughs> lo and behold, Tato did not feel me. She did not even disappoint me. She, she did not clear my doubt at all. Yeah, she sustained my doubt and enriched it the more with her actions. It, is just, it could be a script. I don't know what the hell you're doing. This is what I would love you to do. Pay attention to my actions. Yeah. After the season, go home and watch my third session. So, um, earlier they had had a conversation with um, Tools present and Sister Mara. Um, and I was wondering why during that conversation, Tato kept on emphasizing on her own belief that she believes strongly that Nali really, really likes tools. I think Nali really likes you. I'll be honest and say she really likes you way more than everybody. Everyone. <laughs> maybe she doesn't know it. Maybe she doesn't want she doesn't even notice it. Typically. Everybody that's watching the show knows for a fact that Nale is not at all interested in tools. As a matter of fact, they had a conversation two nights ago. And Nale was telling tools that, listen, I care about you. I like us to be very, very good friends. And I do not want our friendship to go south. If at all, we're going to have issues in this friendship. Let it not be because of anything at all in Biggest House. Because everything here is a game. Let's go outside first. I'm going to have a proper conversation about our friendship. I'm going to review certain things about myself to you. Same thing she said to Tools is the same thing she said to Venus. Meaning she likes and enjoys the, um, the conversations that she's been having with these people. And she wants to further her relationship with them. Friendship, as a matter of fact, with them outside the house. So I found it quite hilarious that... Tato was speaking with so much conviction in what she wasn't even sure about. Because guys, number one, to start with, Nale and Tato, they never have one-on-one -on -one conversations. They only interact when they are in a group. Unlike Nale that has one-on-one -on -one conversations with Venus, from time to time with Terry sometimes, and with Tools most of the time, Nale, I don't think I've ever seen Nale having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Tato. 
They are not cool like that. They are not close like that. And then she was insinuating that because of tools, veto, power, save and replace, that even she that was used to replace someone else was not really angry. She didn't really take it personal. But Nali was the one that was the angriest. Nali was angry. Nali was just vexed, blah, blah, blah. For the past week, you not noticed we're cool now because we spoke about it. But the jabs, the... But then also, sorry, but then also um, tools. why is she so touched? She's the most angry. With this deep anger, this deep pain. Tamara should be the most angry. I'm like... <laughs> What? I mean, this is the same title that has refused to let go of that. She is upset with tools and she has expressed her anger more than once to cash one. So her trying to instigate something, you know, between tools and Nale, I just found it really, really hilarious. And then talking about tools, guys, let's deviate for a bit. After watching tools and observing, paying attention to the kind of conversations he has been having since last week in that house, since Biggie introduced the nomination conspiracy corner. I just came to the conclusion that Tools is overplaying the game. Yeah, I mean, I never knew that I would come to this point where I would say that a housemate in Big Brother is actually overplaying the game. But at this point in time, I think I need to say it, that Tools is actually overplaying the game. He comes across as being overly desperate, um, scared, and overcompensated. Like, every single thing it does now it seems like Asai's trying to be in the good books of the, the housemates. He seriously wants to be in the good books of the audience. And one thing Tools does not realize is that the audience are watching. The audience, they can sniff when someone is doing something for certain benefits or not. I mean, take for instance, there are so many other housemates that are playing their cards without acting desperate about it. I mean, there's Mpo, there's Ntabi, there's Gashwan, there's Temba. These people, they are playing the game, oh, Nala inclusive, they are playing the game, but they are not coming across as, you know, um, desperate. Why? Because they are playing the game, they are enjoying the game, and they are also entertaining us, the viewers. But I feel like with tools, he has lost that entertainment value. So I was looking at him yesterday, and somehow I was kind of scared for him because something was just telling me that the moment this guy is up for nomination, without anybody there to save him, Tools is gonna go home. But let's take a step back from that conversation and move on to Tato and Gashwan's conversation. That whole situation is looking messy, roomy, and I hope that you weren't using me, or rather you only, what, get over this, me, I don't know. Now, from all what Tato and Gashwan were discussing, it was just basically a repetition of what they had discussed earlier in the day. Gashwan still professing his affections to Tato. Tato still talking about, oh, what about Yoli? And Gashwan had told her, don't mention Yoli anymore. Yoli is of the past. Let's focus on ourselves. Now, Gashwan is still doing everything he can to ensure that he gets what he wants from Tato, which I am not really sure. Yeah, because several times Gashwan has said in the diary room that he likes Tato. But then the question that still rings in my head is if you really like this person and you spoke with this person and this person did not really give you the response you wanted or not even yet as at that time, why did you move on to a friend? And then Gashwan told a big lie. But then they didn't know that you guys knew each other from the house. I believe maybe not. You didn't know that we were close. Or did you? I really did it. I'm just really... I mean, guys, imagine Gashwan lying to Tato that he was not fully aware that Tato had a tight friendship, a very, very close friendship with Yoli. And Tato was buying that hook, line, and sinker. I'm <laughs> like, what? Hey, God. Okay, aside that, aside that, Tato, you know, was saying that, oh, Gashan, I don't want us to do this. You're my friend. I tell you every single thing in the house. You're the one I confide in. You're my confidant, blah, blah, blah. But whilst her mouth was saying all of that, just as I mentioned in the video I did earlier yesterday, Tato was wriggling herself into Gashwan's embrace. They were cuddling. Gashwan was massaging her back in a very, very erotic way. This one is not proper. In a very erotic way. And then she was leaning in for a kiss. And then when Gashwan was going to kiss her, she started saying, oh, don't kiss me, don't kiss me. I'm like, what the hell? So, after watching and watching and getting upset and getting angry and just getting fed up with the whole situation, I came up with two theories that, okay, 
these reasons could possibly be why um, Tato is playing the script. So, number one, could it be that Tato is trying to play Gashwan? You know, more like the the the, the player being played by the playee. You know that kind of thing. Um, of course. Tato now knows that Gashwan is a player, you know, having had something to do with her friend, her best friend in the house, um, Yoli, and now is making advances at her. So it could be possible that Tato is probably trying to play Gashwan by his own cards, by his own game. And then secondly, could it be that Tato is trying to create drama? Because she's constantly making a statement, am I the drama? Am I the drama? So could it be that she's trying to create drama, create some sort of um, intriguing, you know, um, spicy kind of situation ship in that house so that it will get people talking and people will save her and keep her in the house so that she's not evicted on Sunday so that she gets to stay longer in the game up to, to the finals. Those two theories were playing in my head but I came to the conclusion that listen whatever her reasons are whatever those two theories are she has failed and she is totally totally late. Number one <laughs> it's not by drama that people survive in Bibi and Zamzi. I don't know. The eviction of Dinky Bliss, the eviction of Acacia should be enough reason, enough, enough evidence now to prove to the housemates that, hey, it's not about your drama. Yeah, it's about the public's vote. Number two, I feel like she's late because all of these cards she's playing right now, she should have done it when Yoli was in the house. She should have formed that alliance with Yoli and then both of them together would have played Gashron by his own cards and made a ridicule out of him if they wanted to, you know, expose his cards and render him, should I say, like strip him off all his cards, all his weapons, just do it. Girl power, girl code. But no, I feel like right now she's betraying Yoli, she's, she's breaking the girl code, whatever her reasons are and totally, totally this is such a wrong timing because she's up for nomination for possible eviction. So come Sunday, she might not survive because the people she's up against, they are kind of strong. Yes, she might not survive. And then if it now happens, unfortunately, that she's evicted, guys, trust me, she's going to have a lot of questions to answer from interviewers and especially Yoli. She's going to have to explain all of those things because you cannot be saying with one mouth, oh, Gashwan, stop it, don't kiss me, blah, blah, blah. but then you are leaning yourself into it. Yeah, playing a game or betraying your friend, Yoli. Which one do you guys think? Please go ahead, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you all on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory Elijah. Don't forget to make it a date with us tomorrow, 3 p.m. WAT or 4 p.m. CAT. And I'll see you guys soon. Have an amazing day. Bye.